it's that time once again as another My Hero Academia episode has come and gone. And it looks as though this one is going to be incredibly dangerous. My reviews are going to work in a way where I talk about the new episode and its contents while glancing over what I think was cool, talk about my favorite characters and moment in the episode. And then if I feel like there is anything worth mentioning in regards to it, I'll also talk about my least favorite character and moment. With those things out of the way, let's see how Deku and the other heroes can overcome a couple unexpected challenges. This week's episode opens with Overhaul and Chronostasis, continuing down a long hallway as they make their escape from the compound while the battle wait is on elsewhere. Overall questions of the people who work for him are actually doing their jobs, considering how much noise seems to be coming from not too far away. Chrono states that it's over for the Hasekai after this whole skirmish, but Overhaul disagrees, saying that as long as he and the boss are still around, the group won't die. Overall seems to be aware that the people in the group don't respect him and instead only wish to follow the main bedridden boss, even though Overall considers himself to be the one who respects the boss the most. He has something on his person that he refers to as the finished product in Serum, and then as long as he has it, the group can bloom again. Finally, he and Chrono walk past the waiting twice in Toga, telling them that it is time for the temps to get to work. Back at the scene of the previous episode's battle, Fatgum is trying to wake Kirishima up. All Kirishima can do is muster out a few words promising to protect Fatgum while hardly being able to keep conscious. Fatgum is a flashback to Kirishima showing up at his office to apply for an internship, and recalls his desire to be a hero who protects with all his heart like Crimson Riot. Tears well up in Fatgum's eyes as he looks down at fading Kirishima, telling him he has done enough. As it quickly turns out though, that isn't exactly the truth, as Rappa stands up and proclaims that nobody has won this battle yet, since no one is dead. Fatgum knows he has no true way of putting up a fight, but much to his shock, Rappa doesn't seem to want to continue now. He speaks of having gained a lot of respect for the fight Kirishima suddenly put up towards the end, and wants to help him heal, offering to make the two to a back room of first aid. Rappa reveals his past to being something like an MMA fighter, constantly beating people down and not being able to finish them off. Fakum deduces that someone like Rappa can't possibly have ulterior motives and picks up Kirishima, carrying him to that first aid room while assuring him that he understands Kirishima now and he has been acknowledged by not only his superiors but also the enemy. We catch up with the others now, still heading down a hallway, trying to chase down Togata, who is closing in an overhaul. Mimic starts to distort the hallway they're in again, trying to crush them with the walls again. The heroes have to think quickly. However, we go back to Fatgum, tending to Kirishima's wounds and having a conversation with Rappa. Fatgum asks Rappa why he's bothering to be a part of Overhaul's group when he is so strong, and the answers come as a big shock. As it turns out, Overhaul was the first person to ever beat Rappa in a fight. He had tried to recruit Rappa to his group, and Rappa had decided if Overhaul could beat him, he had joined. As soon as Rappa throws a punch, the upper half of his body explodes, killing him. Within a blink of an eye, however, he is suddenly alive again, and this process repeats five more times over Rappa's tenure under Overhaul. He only remains with the group so he can one day defeat him, regardless of his powerful quirk. Fakum questions why Overhaul sent his underlings out to fight for him when he is so strong, wondering why he just won't show up himself. Rappa quickly spills the beans, saying that Overhaul is working towards restoring Yakuza to their former glory, distributing something to help that dream come true. He is in need of enough money, however, and as soon as Overhaul is able to completely fund his operation, the day will come where he will finally make his move. Back with the other heroes once more, Rockoff puts his quirk to use, and this time we've got ourselves an explanation of it from present Mike. His quirk is locked down, and whenever he uses it on, gets locked in place as long as he touches it. The only thing he can't lock is living things, but in this case, he's able to lock the entire hallway down momentarily, using the extent of his power to do so. Mimic starts attacking with parts of the hallway not locked down, but this time Deku starts to use one for all full cowling shoot style to destroy the concrete coming towards him and the others. It's becoming clear to Mimic that the boost from the drug he took won't last much longer, so he needs to keep going at full power before he's rendered useless. Deku continues to smash away at the oncoming massive room until finally things step momentarily. Without warning, the walls begin to separate everyone, leaving Rocklock alone while Deku and Eraserhead are on the other side of an adjacent wall. Toga suddenly appears behind Rocklock and lunges at him with a knife, stabbing him through the hand. Rocklock is able to lock the knife in place and shock Toga, giving her a chance to punch her. As his punch connects, she turns to mush and the distraction they provide allows the real Toga to leap onto Rocklock's back and stab him in the side, giving her access to his blood. Deku crashes through the wall with the razor head to find Rocklock down on the ground bleeding out of his side with another Rocklock leaned down next to him. The fake Rocklock proclaims that he was attacked by a double and managed to take them down. Fooling Deku in the moment, but not eraser head, he uses his quirk quick as the fake rock lock tries to stab Deku, revealing it to be Toga. She manages to stab Eraser Head in the back and then flung herself away from the two, disappearing beneath the wall opening that quickly closes up. Eraser Head truly didn't believe that anyone from the League of Villains would actually show up during this fight, thinking that there was no way Shigaraki could actually put himself beneath another. Deku thinks back to the previous arc from back in season 3, and the character Kami who he originally thought had a quirk that worked the way Toga's does. In that moment, it seemed as though he has realized that it was Toga pretending to be Kami back then all along. 
Yet another flashback takes place, showing Shigaraki and Overhaul playing Shogi while discussing who from the League will assist Overhaul when the heroes show up. He asks for Toga or Kurogiri, along with Twice, asking Shigaraki to help close the gap between their operations, with a little showing of teamwork. Back in the fight, Twice has shown up with a copy of Rappa to fight against Night Eye and the police, without actually using his foresight to predict what the Rappa clone will do, and trips him. But not before a blow from the hulking fake actually grazes the hero and tears his clothing right open. With a single blow, Night Eye sends Rappa flying across the room and into a wall thanks to the usage of some support items with high density. Night Eye throws one of the items at Twice and rips open his mask, causing him to have a crisis and run off behind a newly formed wall. He holds his mask together while breaking down, afraid that he will split in two if he can't close it back up. Toga appears before Twice and ties his mask up with a cloth, keeping it together for now while chastising the people they're working with. She commends Twice for putting up with Overhaul's group despite what happened between the two groups in the past, considering Twice's guilt over ever introducing Overhaul to them in the first place. There is yet another flashback which seems to be a pretty popular thing to do during the first half of this season. And we see Shigaraki informing Toga and Twice and that they'll be working with Overhaul, and after a tense moment promising them that the two of them doing this will benefit them all. He trusts the two of them to take advantage of the group from the inside and asks them to do this. The two continue to bad talk the Yakuza, finally sending off Mimic who is listening in on them, and he drops them along with Deku and Eraserhead down holes while the words crush and kill them all flash across the screen ending the episode. This one was a pretty decent departure from the last couple of episodes, focusing on the League of Villains involvement in the showdown, and it was well appreciated. I'll be honest, nothing really stood out for me here in the episode, and it was mostly a lot of explanations and flashbacks, which had been holding the season back a little bit as things had progressed. However, it was still interesting to watch the setup for the last couple episodes of the first half of the show, and I really look forward to seeing how things go. The preview shows Togata finally catching up to Overhaul, and a two-on-one -on -one battle for Eri begins. And my god, you guys, this looks like it's gonna be a big deal. I'm expecting some great animation, writing and action over the next couple episodes. I don't know what is going to happen, but I think it's going to be something so huge that all of us anime only people might end up being floored. Well, that's going to do it for my review of My Hero Academia Season 4 Episode 10, Temp Squad. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know in the comments below and subscribe to Mystic Sage with notifications on so you don't miss my review of the fourth season's next great episode. I've got a lot of great videos about My Hero Academia already on the channel and about plenty of other anime as well with more to come. I hope you guys have been enjoying these reviews and the show so far as well. And I'll be back at it next week with a review of the next exciting My Hero episode.